see you. Nice to see you. Gino, James, James, how are you, my man? man? Cool, right. Are you well? Yeah, good. Now, gentlemen, yeah. both of you are in the restaurant business. You each run your yes. own restaurants. What's the secret of a successful restaurant, do you think? Well, the secret, I think, is first of all, is the way you buy. You know, mm. trying to buy good stuff and from the market, so, mm -hmm. you know, you're trying to save a few money. The second big thing is to be in an area where there are a lot of rich people. <laughs> <laughs> people are going to afford to come to your you restaurant. Oh, that's it. You know what you're going to be charged there. What about you, my man? It he summed it up really the quality of the ingredients, but the mm. most important thing about running any business is costs. Yeah. If, if your costs aren't in, you're not going to make a living. Sure. And that's, that, that's bottom and line. Good staff, too, I think, are really, really important. No, yeah, definitely. That's all, you know, that's all part of it. Absolutely. And staff uh, is the big yeah, problem. Yeah, yeah. the biggest. Yeah. Everybody talks about that. All the chefs on the programme talk about staff, staff, staff. Well, we have two people today who are very much associated or have been associated with the restaurant business. Let's find out more as we welcome from Norfolk, Hazel Aubrey Wade. <laughs> How are you, darling? Hey. Welcome. <laughs> nice to see you. Come and meet Gina. Hey, sir. Hey. Buongiorno. <laughs> sir, what was your secret of running a restaurant then? Or oh, your uh, pubs and everything? I think part of it is keeping jolly. Mm. You know, make people feel at ease, be happy. Our restaurant was called Jester's, yeah. so we had lots of hats and different colours and bright things. Make people feel relaxed yeah, and nice happy. Nice and all yeah. oh, right. Well, I think everyone's right. nicely relaxed in the studio today. So, tip out your bag and let's have a look what ingredients you bought for our chef. Oh, that's it. Oh, nearly lost your savoy there, darling. <laughs> oh, must now. do that. Just add a bit of chicken on the bone because it looks yes. quite. Yes. Yeah, I thought that would fantastic. make a change. Mm -hmm. I buy a lot of chicken. I'm diabetic, so mm. um, I have to have low fat. Mm -hmm. So I usually buy breast or a whole chicken. So mm -hmm. I thought that okay. would make a change. Um, this is a real treat. Mm because of the low fat, being diabetic, this a bit of I cheese. don't have. <laughs> sure, <laughs> you know, okay. So that is, really is a big treat for me to have mm -hmm. still. And because we've been on a diet, because we've retired and got too fat, yeah. um, which, <laughs> which <laughs> we've oh, changed... Oh, lovely, look at me, look at the state of me. I'm going to have to go and get myself a butternut <laughs> squash. <laughs> Well, it's less than a potato, oh, isn't it? Is, it? Yes, darling, I know. I know. <laughs> so we've go. turned to those, and I think they're absolutely wonderful. Beautiful. Yes. Well, you've got the Savoy cabbage, leeks and bacon. How much yeah. did you pay for all of that? £7.48. Great. Uh, allowed up to £7.50 for our bistro bag. You know that anyway, don't you? But mm. what about Gino? Do you like that? Uh, those ingredients? Excellent. Yeah? Yeah, that's fantastic. It's very good. Yeah, yeah he's we delighted. can do a few things here, yeah, definitely. Mm, Thank you. Someone else who's fantastical, as Gino says, is your old man, isn't he? Well, yes, yeah? yes, yes, yeah. yes. Well, you think so? Yes. <laughs> You've been married too long, have you? 22 years. Well, that's not too bad. That's not it? too bad. That's all right then. Yes, Still in yes. love? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's meet the other half, shall we? <laughs> Ken Aubrey Wade. <laughs> Hello. So, Ken, you still in love then? Yes. Yes, yes of course. Yes, you, yes. you need a bit of that, don't you? Now, you've had lots of interesting jobs in the past, haven't you? I have. I um, started life as assistant stage manager, mm -hmm. stage manager, company stage manager. Um, went onto the ships, assistant cruise director, cruise director, then went to the airlines, mm -hmm. BOAC as it was in mm -hmm. those days, and done lots of extra work. Absolutely. Lots of odd things. Uh, sitting, watching Sky last week, saw myself on three old episodes of Dad's Army made in the 1970s. No oh, he's a bit of an extra, thing. TV extra then. TV extra. Oh, well, it was good money and good fun. Yeah. Absolutely. Let's have a look, see how good you are right. at shopping then. OK, oh. Ken, tell us what you brought along here. Well, because of Hazel's diabetes, mm -hmm. uh, Butcher made these for me today. Yeah. This Cumberland ring. Mm -hmm. Really nice, a treat, because it's full of fat. Mm -hmm. and I, I was on this diet, 1711, mm -hmm. and now got down to 14, 14, 6, 14, 7. Wow, you've done well for yourself. So yeah, these yeah. are a real treat. OK. As is the potato, because potato is no longer allowed. Mm -hmm. We're now on the butternut squash. No, absolutely. Cycle. And sweet potato. Um, That's pretty good for you, though. And the figs. Lovely. Love figs, yeah. but can sit and eat a box of the round box at one sitting and yeah. suffer for it. Lovely. But I'd love to see what you can do with the fresh ones. Yeah. Which I... And how much did all that cost you along with sweet onion, the, oh, sorry, swede, I should say, petit pois, peas and the apples? Well, unlike the older lady that mm. spent quite a lot of money, this was 7 43 oh, oh, yeah. Saved yourself a few P, eh? That's very nice indeed. A few P, get it, oh, P. Yeah. All right. <laughs> oh, oh, no, it's no. terrible, isn't it, eh? Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> what do you think, Chef? I think it's a brilliant bag, mm -hmm. and uh, we're definitely going to come up with some wicked stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Lovely. He's delighted with that. Well done. You have a bit of a chat, okay. Ken, and let's find out what Gino's going to be doing over here then. Okay. Um, we're going to do some breast of chicken stuffed with uh, Stilton wrapped in the um, bacon. Bacon. We're going to serve that one with the cheesy butternut squash mash. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to do a classic cabbage and bacon soup. Then we're going to do half of the butter squash roasted and stuffed with cheese, spring onion and uh, uh, bacon. Okay, leeks. The leeks. Well, leeks. <laughs> just in case, Chef, just in case they take a little bit longer to cook. What do you think of that then, Hazel? Sounds delicious. Yeah, sounds delicious. delicious. Looking forward to seeing it, yes. you know. Fabulous. OK, over here. Now, what's Ken getting from you then, James? Right, well, brilliant bag, lots going on. Um, I'm going to take the figs and an apple and do a tart tatan, mm -hmm. which is an upside-down caramelised tart. Mm -hmm. We're going to do um, classic pea and mint soup, because I've got loads of peas, you can't go wrong. Roast one of the sausages whole, but we're going to do it with an apple, a um, bit of swede and potato mash. Mm -hmm. Then with the rest of the swede, we're going to make some chunky chips mm -hmm. and turn one of the sausages into a burger. And if I can nick a bit of Gino's cheese, just, no. a, just a slice, <laughs> Gino. No. Gino, don't be like that. <laughs> right. I'll, I'll do a little cheeseburger, but we'll use some of the stilton on top works wonderfully well with that. Oh, all those things you can't eat at home, mm, eh? Nice. You looking forward to that, Ken? Lovely. OK, husband and wife are absolutely oh, delighted. But uh, how will our chefs fare in 20 minutes? We're about to find out. As I say, ready, steady. Cook. Okay, up and running, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. Beautiful bits of chicken there, wrapped okay. in a bit of Stilton and some bacon Excellent. to accompany it. We've got two different types of the older uh, butternut squash. One's going to be roasted off. Again, a bit of cheese and a bit of bacon going through it. Well, there's so much there. And the other is going to be salted down in a uh, soup. Classic soup with the old cabbage and bacon. Um, the leeks, I'm not too sure. I can't quite remember what he's going to do at the leeks, but that's what makes the programme so interesting. One of these sausages, however, will be cooked down and uh, baked in the oven. The other one's going to be turned into a burger. We've got the apple, we've got the uh, beautiful figs here. That's going to be like a tart tatan. Half the peas are going to go into the soup, the other half probably be mashed. And then we've got a, uh, a bit of a mash accompanied by the sweet, the potato and apple, did you say, Chef? Yes, yes. That's going to be an interesting combination, but first, Let's find out about butternut right, squash just, and just see what Gino's going to be uh, it up, doing with it. So. OK, first of all, what I do, um, I'm going to have to parboil this one quite quickly. First, uh, okay. because I'm going to do the mashed butternut squash, mm -hmm. and then the other one I'm going to roast it. But still, I want it to blanch it very quickly. Just to blanch you know, it Just bit. to blanch them a little bit again. It nice does take time to cook. No, 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 you're talking about certainly longer than 20 minutes that we have on the programme to sort of roast them into the oven. You want to double that time with lovely herbs and a bit of olive oil or something. And what I'm going to do with this one here, because mm -hmm. I wanted to... Uh, just in the spoon, yeah. yeah. I wanted to uh, roast them with the skin, because I think they're going to hold quite beautifully. Yeah. OK, so I'm just... What I'll take the seeds off, and then I wanted to make uh, a um, cavity. Yeah. What a fantastic word I just said. Cavity. Yeah. <laughs> Ten years in this country and I can say cavity. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, you just want to make a cavity and start yeah. to boil like that. Then we're going to grill it, stuff it into the oven. Beautiful. Okay. Okay. Just hot water with a little bit of salt. And do you have much... Uh, use, do they use it in uh, Italy very much, the butternut squash? Never. 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 <laughs> Absolutely no, Anselm. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, it's something that I... Maybe in the north of Italy they use it. Yeah. But something that I never seen in the south, in Naples, where okay. I come from. It, it's great for the children. And I it's nutritious. It's very nutritious. Nutritious. Children, they do like sweet stuff. Yeah. Now, what I'm going to do with, with the, uh, the chicken, I'm yeah. thinking the bone, all the bone here and all the leg, I'm going to use it to do the soup. Yeah. So it's going to give a nice chicken flavour. OK, so, let's get another saucepan on uh, for that yeah, then, So chef. the only thing I want to do, I just very carefully take the breast off uh -huh. and very easily, with a very sharp knife, just run through the meat, get as close as possible as, you know, to the bone, and then it's done. OK, you know, it's quite and simple. all of that's going to go into our stock pot there. Yeah, a, well, ba a bay leaf in there, chef? Yes, please. Okay. What I'm going to do, because I want yeah. to do some skewers, OK, with the... Um, what do you call this? Uh, the, 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 the bones. The, the bones. Yeah. I'm trying to take as much meat as possible out. Yeah. Because then with this meat, I'm going to do the skewers, so nothing is waste. Yeah. And whatever is the bone, I'm going to do the soup. There you go. OK. So he's taking all that off there. That's a little it. bit you of a skewer. I've done you... the cabbage. Whoa! Yeah. Fantastical! 
Excellent. Chunky right. garbage for the soup, the sliced one for the stir fry. Yeah, lovely. <laughs> Very good. I'll come back and see you shortly. Well yes. done. Very okay, done. Hazel's doing a good job. What are you doing over here, my man? Right, I'm just. Uh, Chef, butter's getting a little brown. That's cool. If you just put it on the diffuser. The ring, yeah. Yep. Okay, there. Well, you have a little bit of sugar in there, too. Yeah, yeah. I did. Right. Okay, that's for your tartar tartar. But this is it? it. But first of all, I need mm. to get the pastry done. So. Mm. There's the, some pastry. It's about oh, 60 grams of butter, 120 grams of flour, one egg. Yeah. Yeah, chuck that down there. But what we got to do is, I'm just going to leave this here for a second, mm -hmm. put it on a flour top. Does just help it rest. relax, reasonably, you know, mm. you could put it in the fridge for a bit. But what yeah. we got here is butter and sugar on the back. Yeah. Over here we've got the figs. I'm just going to take the tops off, the figs. Nice. Do they go so, particularly well? Do they break down too much? They do. You know, they we do normally associate the tatao, and I know there's been variations, like when we use a, a bit of a banana, banana or something yeah, like yeah, that. Sure. But they are soft, aren't they? These are soft. That's yeah. why I've got the butter and sugar going together already, because yeah. all we're literally going to do is lay these in here, put the pastry straight on top, mm. then get them straight into the oven. Great. So we slice these up lengthways, like so, mm -hmm. and then also I'm going to do an apple. Now, oh. this here, we're just going to go like so, one, two, three with the apple, mm -hmm. and this is obviously going to go in with the tatan. This is going to help that because this is firmer, but what I've got to do is quickly, I'm just going to do a term that we call turning. So I'm just going to take out the root, or the core, Jeez. thank mm -hmm. you, your... <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take out the core of the apple. Hey, my mouse wouldn't have yeah. that at home. I tell you, he'd spit that out. He How would... much do you need, Gene? Just, just a slice, please, Gene, my man. I think it's slice, he just wants to put it on top of his burger. There you Is go. Right? Uh, I Should think that's okay. more than enough, actually, Chef. Thank you very much indeed. That's lovely. Here we are. Just, just remember my generosity. You see that you okay. in the boat. <laughs> Definitely. Oh, idea. chef, this is browning up. Okay, that's cool. That's all right because we get that colour. Really. Bit more sugar in there. Are no, you happy? No, that will stop it. Okay. Right. So apples in there straight away. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. Think pe they're going peas in there. over here. All of them. Yeah, and then if you can get me some garlic, we'll put some garlic in there as well. That'd be beautiful. Lovely. Here we are, my man. So, there you apples go. are caramelised. Garlic. The reason is I've got the caramelisation. I yeah. wanted it to do it early, like I said, because yeah. you, you summed it up, really, about the figs. Yeah. So, they're going to go in there. We've got some colour going in there, and it's starting to go brown. Now, these are already firm, so we space these out, like so, randomly. We get the rest of the figs. We lay the figs straight down into the hot caramel. Mm -hmm. OK? So, notice it's completely off the heat now, not doing this on the heat. Now... After we've got the base of this covered, we know that the apples are already covered, yeah? Mm. So what I do is get a strainer, and I'll just show you how I get a, a bowl. Now, we know that all of that's cooking already, <laughs> so any excess, cos it'll make your pastry too wet otherwise... Yeah, go on, Chef, tip it. We strain, and then we leave that lovely thick syrup. Yeah. OK? Leave this, excuse me, over here. Yeah. Right, so, bit of flour on the top. Roll it out to the size of the pan. OK, quantities of uh, that uh, pastry, Chef? Yeah, uh, 60 grams, 80 grams of butter, 140 yeah. grams of plain flour, mm -hmm. one egg and a splash of water. OK, that's if you've just joined us, ladies and gentlemen, because um, I know our chef did mention that earlier on. All right. OK, right, so, just roughly, roughly like so, around the outside of the pan. Mm. OK, and we'll guess that part for the hand lines. Yeah, yeah, right. all right then, mate, yeah, yeah. And then use the rolling pin to pick up your pastry. Now, I know it looks like I'm going bigger, but there's a reason. Mm. Roll it back. Mm. Roll it over the top. Get a wooden spoon or the base of a knife. Push it down so it creates a tight seal. Yeah, a little bit of a plate almost, isn't it? A pastry plate, yeah, that's definitely. what you're creating. Right, push that down like so. Mm -hmm. In the oven. There you go. All right, step by step, uh, making a tartar tan. Round of applause for our chef there, don't you think, guys? <laughs> OK. okay. Garlic. Yeah. Chop up the garlic. Yeah, three times. There you go. Yeah, yeah. There you go. This is a lovely. Should I just bang it and give yeah, it a good old thing for you? you? So we're doing there a base for a pea and mint soup. Here I've got mm. some peas, the chicken stock tube, some of your garlic, yeah. water. Finish it with mint. If we put mint in at the beginning, it's going to turn it bitter and it's going to turn some of the soup black. Okay. Just enough water to absorb the peas. We'll finish it with a tadge of cream. We're going to blitz it and a really quick soup. Okay. So you the garlic is what really boosts like. it, OK? There you go. Fabulous, fabulous. Chopping it up. Well, you, you've got a uh, famous uh, chef cooking for you, but you used to cook for one of our favourite personalities on the television, didn't you? Well, I say cook. Yeah. Um, late 70s, I applied for a job that was at the back of the stage. It yeah. said, personality, television personality, requires a housekeeper. And I thought, well, why not? So I applied. Um, and one day I got a telephone call, and this young voice said, would you like to come and see us? 
So knowing who it was, I went across to this address in Ascot. Yeah. And Anthea Redfern came to the door and she said, Bruce will be with you in a little while. If you'd like to come through, he was playing the piano. It's yeah. before they moved into their place they live in oh, now. Cooking and for Bruce Foresight, ladies and gentlemen. And that I nice? started there and he said to me, um, mm -hmm. how do I know you can cook? And I said, uh, what sort of food do you like? And he likes steak and kidney pies and stuff Same that, food. that I can manage. Yeah. And he said to me, you'll have to, because uh, that was his wife then, you'll have to come and cook for me. So I made them a steak and kidney pie that night with their names in pastry on the top. And at the end of the meal, and I was all sort of, because mm, it was, yeah. he said to me, I think you can start. He said, to me, and they moved house about a month later into the new house at Wentworth. Oh, lovely. And that's how I got that job. Brilliant. That's a lovely story. Very, very nice story, that. Hey, cooking for Brucey. Oh, definitely. Oh, good big game, fan. good game. Big, big yeah, nice man. No, very big nice fan. man, very genuine. He's just when brilliant. you walked in at Halfway, night. Halfway, gentlemen. When you walked in at night, or he came in, you go, nice to see you, to see you. <laughs> well, something like that. Right. It ain't you if you said that. It ain't you if you said that. Now, Chef, that pan's been on for a long time. It's getting really hot. What's going in there? Well, actually, I forgot to use it, and yeah. I'm just getting it really hot. OK. Moment. All <laughs> right. I'll just put that over the side there, OK? Right, in the meantime, like, we can get some um, the onion. I want to slice it into rings, please. That'd in be rings? brilliant. Yeah. Put OK, I'll on. let you get on with that, and let's go back and see how Gino's getting on. Yeah, I've neglected you down here a bit, Gino. So yeah, lots... Yes, so I saw lots... that. <laughs> lots to catch up on, Chef. Tell me what you're doing OK, here. what I've done? First of all, I've got the chicken to the oven, which I stuffed with the cheese. Yeah. Bacon around. I just, you know, make a nice colour into the oven, so it's going to be all nice and melted inside and beautiful, beautiful and crispy. Beautiful, beautiful, now beautiful. Now I'm preparing the stuffing for the uh, button of scorch, which I'm going... Which and I here's the uh, chicken that Gino was referring to. You can see that, guys. Just wrapped around, used the bacon, and you've got that lovely shape of the actual breast of chicken there and all the cheese is inside. So that's just going to cook off on How a nice high heat this, and hopefully that will be yeah, ready as in time. As as possible, it's all fine. All right, right then, now... Okay, so we got this one, which should be quite OK, mm. I hope. OK. Maybe one minute longer. All right, Okay, then. one minute. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to You're looking it. for it to be a little bit more tender, are yes. you, Chef? Yes, yeah, that's what I'm looking for. OK, fab. The soup is on. I put the chicken uh, into the soup there, mm. nice and easy. Mm. And then I put the cabbage, the bacon, a little bit of uh, chicken sock. Mm -hmm. uh, very, very Simplicity. easy. Simplicity. Now, what, what, what about you? Uh, when you get into the kitchen, do you often go to one of your sort of cookery books or...? Because uh, you collect them, don't you? Well, I've got about, I suppose, about 115. Mm, that's quite a lot of books. Quite that's a lot quite of books. a lot of books, yeah. But I've started collecting old cookery books, going back to... 1920, 1926. Were well, the recipes very different then? Obviously totally, they were, not they? Totally. You didn't get butternut squash in them, did you? You didn't yeah. get it, or pasta, mm. or peppers, or anything like that. Mm. And you had to have things that were in season. You didn't sure. get things. And it also it shows the difference in the way people mm. live. If you had money, what you could buy. Sure. And if you didn't, what you couldn't. Absolutely. And it was... Very interesting. Gina, do you collect cookery books then? Uh, I have a lot of Italian cookery book, uh -huh. um, but very old. I like I like to buy the old ones. Yeah, yeah. What, uh, yeah. You, go, you, say, yeah. you go to a church where you buy these old ones. They're fantastic. Mm. Uh, and of course, I got yours. And what period are we talking about? You, 50, 60 years old, or 100 years old? Uh, no, probably about 20, 30. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I and still use my book that I bought mm. when I got married. First time. First time. First time. Yeah. Uh, when I was 19. First time. First time. First time. Yes, when I was 19. Is this one better? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Not so boring. Not so boring. <laughs> no. You don't sit down there. He was a traveller, isn't he? He's yeah. been all over the place. He's <laughs> yes. done all sorts of things. And what was the first meal that you cooked for him when you first got together? What, what did you cook for each other? I cooked him liver and bacon hot pot. Oh, yeah. And cabbage. Oh, did that go down well? He said he thoroughly enjoyed it, but told me afterwards he didn't like liver. Oh, all right. But he ate it, though. But he says he likes liver now. Because he likes the way I cook it. Oh. The dog liked it as well. I've got to ask you then, Ken, what's so special about Hazel's liver? <laughs> she just has a way with it. She has a way with it, doesn't yeah. she? <laughs> mm. I, I don't overcook it. it. You don't overcook it. You keep liver it nice can be and tender. Overcooked. Yes. 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 Do you want those in? Um, this one, what I want to do, Ainsley, mm. I was thinking to do some spicy tomato paste. Yeah. So we got the tomato paste. If we can put a little bit of uh, um, Tabasco in here. Okay. Only six minutes to go, chef. So we oh, really need to crack on with that. What do you a want little bit of uh, Tabasco in there. Here we are, my darling. A little bit of Tabasco. What else, chef? And then uh, tomato, a pinch, 
a little bit of vinegar, and then we're going to coat this one and uh, grill them very quickly. OK, then, here we are. Put quite a bit of that in there and then a little bit of vinegar. OK, and um, that's it. Where is that there? Oh, sorry, darling. <laughs> that's it. We'll get in there, aren't we? <laughs> That's it, and give that a little bit of a stir. And a bit of lemon juice or lemon lime juice? Lemon juice, for anything I see with acid, that will work fine. You know, vinegar okay. or lime juice or lemon juice, anything will do. All right, then, get a bit of that in there. And so you, uh, and what did he cook you then? Well, he did a steak. Yeah. And some frozen onion rings. Careful. That, that wasn't very adventurous, was it? Steak and onion rings from a packet. Ah, but she brought a bottle of Blue Nun, so they were well matched. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's out there anymore, but it's trendy then, though, wasn't it? Oh, not eh? You were well impressed with him, weren't you? Oh, but it lovely. was awful. Yeah. Absolutely awful. <laughs> <laughs> All right, darling, get them in there. Pour that on the top of those as uh, best as you can, all over those sticks. There you go. And so I'm making the mashed squash, and what I do, I put a little bit of double cream. Yeah. Then I drain the, the squash that I boiled it. Yeah. And I'll, I, whenever I, use the, I do the mashed potato or mashed sauce, I like to use those, uh, the mash in there, like a garlic. What is called there? Which one? Uh, the, uh, the, 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 yeah, the, the uh, ricer. Yeah, the ricer, because what's happened, I think, it makes the mashed potato or whatever things you have to mash much, much easier. To, um, to mash it. And yeah. if it, it comes nice and fine, you don't have to worry about lamb. So what okay. do you want me to do now? I don't know, darling. He's going to get you to do something, something in a minute, isn't he, eh? I'm going to get you straight away to do something. Have you got those herbs? If you can put those herbs... Do you want some more herbs? No, into a little bowl. A little bowl. There we are, a little bowl down there. OK, okay. we've got the chicken cooking, we've got the herbs. And we've got the butternut squash being mashed. It's all really coming together now, everybody. Okay. Right, that enough? Roll those yeah, around. that's fine. With a little bit of uh, <laughs> olive oil, salt and pepper, and then it's fantastic. OK, three minutes to go there, Gina. Oh, really have to get it. these cooking. Oh. There we are. Lovely. All that lovely flavour going oil, on is there. Is the uh, olive oil? Olive oil, no, darling. It says balsamic vinegar on the front. I've got there it round the wrong way, then. <laughs> Here you are, a bit of olive oil there for you. Oh, there it is. <laughs> OK, now we've got the cabbage cooking down. We've sorted it off. A little bit of chilli in there, did you say? A little chill? bit of chilli. And here what am I doing? It. The cheese, mm. the butter squash, nice and mashed, with a little bit of double cream. Yeah. Not too much salt, because it's a lot of salt into, into this. In the seal from there, it's quite salty as OK, cheese. right then. So be careful with that. So the cabbage is done. That's, I'm going to put that on a high heat for yeah, you there. Yeah, on a high heat. The soup, okay. how are we doing the soup there? The soup's looking good. Maybe season that up. I'm just going to yeah, pop I that down here. Seasoning. OK, back. Back down to the Red Tomato Excellent. Kitchen, all sorts of things happening here. He's pretty blitzing away. We've got uh, all the... Ca I think that's the Swede cooking down here. How's that going to form, Chef? We've got about right, two right. minutes to go. Right, there we are. Now, how, do you want that mashed down? Yes, please, yeah. OK. Right. Beautiful. Now, oh, Nine the tartar truth, tans thanks. looking good. That's coming out. Let's get something here. Let's get that on there. There you go. You didn't want the stock, did you, Chef? No, no, not no, at all. No, you didn't want the stock there. No. Here we are. Do you want to grab oh, hold mash. of this? Yeah. Here we are. Mash those down as quick as you can. We've only got about a minute and a half to go. Right, what about the sausage, Chef? That's in the oven, yeah, is it? Yeah, everything's coming, yeah. OK, everything's sort of coming together. Is this going right. to have any cream or milk? There we are. A bit of butter. I'm getting a bit of butter for you. A bit of butter's on the way, my man. Thank there you. we are. So what are you going to do now in your retirement? You're just chilling out with the, yeah, with the lots grandchildren? Yeah, lots of walking. Unfortunately, yeah. the dogs have all now died, but lots of walking, lots of reading. Um, still like going away for little sort of trips if we can to Denmark and places like that, you know. And you've got chickens at home, haven't you? Yeah, we've and got uh, chickens that uh, decided to adopt us. And then just before Christmas, or no, it was a little before the last Christmas, um, a turkey uh, decided to come to our home. The postman told me it was a male and uh, she produced eight babies. Oh, no, you had to get rid of them quick, didn't you? They were trash in the place. <laughs> oh, no. There was poo everywhere. <laughs> All right, then. Piles of it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the music has started. That means we are really cracking on now. The chefs have to get their food out on time. We've got about 40 seconds to go now. That's enough. There we are. Get that mash over here. That's Can brilliant. There we are, my man. In there. I don't know where it's going to go. The chef will tell you where do you want your yeah. mashed potato. Yeah. Nice Pop that on there. We've got the chicken out of the oven now. We've got the chicken kebabs over there. We've got butternut squash. We've got beautiful mashed potatoes. We've got the tartar and apple with the uh, figs. Looking really, enough, really yeah? lovely. Yeah, that's OK, nice. 20 yeah. seconds to go now. That's it. In the oven, chef, you've got your yeah. banger. Audience, get ready to help me count down. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Stop! Wow. Running all over.
over the place, wouldn't we? To remind you of what our chef started with, Gino De Campo had a chicken breast on the bone, some smoked back bacon, butternut squash, Dilton cheese, Savoy cabbage, and baby leeks. Whilst James Tanner had a couple of Cumberland rings, potatoes, swede, frozen peas, apples, figs, and a sweet onion. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think that Ken and Hazel are really in for a treat here. You happy with your food here? It smells lovely. Well, you tell us how it tastes then. Pick up your cutlery, have a bit of a go. Chef, what are you going to call this? OK, well, uh, uh, I hope it's mashing is the breast we can do. Uh. <laughs> That's a block, That's it. Nice and light. Yeah. How's this? Lovely. Lovely. She's lovely. She really is enjoying is her broth. Yes. OK. Is it well seasoned, Gina? What did you do? Tell mm. us how you made that. Ah, very, very simple. First yeah. of all, I used the bone of the chicken. I put them in the boiling water just mm -hmm. to give a nice chicken soak flavour. Yeah. And then I put the um, bacon, the cabbage, um, mm. a little bit of salt and pepper. It's quite mm. simple. And the leeks as well. So it creates, you know, it's a quite clear soup, but then yeah. you got a lot of crunchiness from the cabbage. Sure. Here, uh, chicken breast, what I did, I stuffed it with cheese, wrapped it into mm. the... Uh, uh, <laughs> into the bacon, and I prepared a beautiful sauce with a, a button squash and silton cheese. Mmm. Fantastico. Nice. Can I take him home? Oh, you could do. <laughs> what will Ken have to say about that? Are you going to kick him out, are you? No, he can take James. I've got somebody who's here. Both of them. I'll take him home. <laughs> well, <laughs> take James. <laughs> <laughs> OK, then. Oh, Here's so some spicy skewers with tomato paste, you know, using mm. it, a little bit of lime juice, chilli, with spicy stir-fried cabbage, yeah. and then roasted butter and squash, stuffed mm. with everything I had on the table. OK, <laughs> everything else just went in there. Just went in there. OK, my darling, what do you think? It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. You nibble your chicken, all right, <laughs> then. There you go. Now, over to you then, Ken. Mm, You've been nice. waiting patiently. You've got some onion rings to add yeah, today, have you, Chef? Yeah, a few uh, battered onion rings to go with the sausages. Yeah, go on, you pick can up I your start? cup ring. You can yeah. start with anything you want, my right, man. Right, I'm going to try with the ring. sausage. OK, what are you going to call this then, Chef? Well, um, I think uh, this tart and this food is exceedingly good. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Mm. Lovely. Mm. Well, OK, tell us, how, how did you prepare that? Right. What's so special well, about that mash? That's just not a normal mash, cos we've got Swede in there, potato, butter, cream, and then we put an apple in it towards the end, cos if I'd put it in the beginning, it would just gone to pulp and gone yeah. out into the liquid. So you've got that lovely mm. apple mm. flavour mm. as well. Mm. Simple batter Good. Um, Good. with Excellent. fizzy water, one egg self-raising flour, yeah. onion rings. Oh, that we've got the off. ultimate, mm. thanks to Gino, the cheese um, on our burger, which we've yeah. just cooked through with some uh, Swede... These are Swede chips, actually, that oh. I've put um, cayenne mm. pepper oh. on. Mm. So, you like it? Mm. You like it? I think he likes that one. <laughs> right, so we've got sweet chips, mm. something, something like a bit different as well. We've got pea, uh. pea, pea and mint soup. Mm. Pea and mint soup are classic. Mm. Did I mention the sweet chips, which mm. he's enjoying? Mm. And then the grand, the grand finale, we've got the tart to tang, mm. which okay. is the apple and the caramelised figs on that lovely, light, gooey pastry. We finished it with cream and also mm. something different. We put thyme on it because mm -hmm. thyme works very well with figs and it's all caramelised together. And the pastry, as you can see, gets this wonderful gloss. Mm. That's where we um, stabbed it in around the outside. Am I allowed to say that is yeah. better than sex? Is it really? Mm. <laughs> I don't know, you weren't talking about you, Hazel. Don't worry about it. <laughs> anyway, we've got to go for a vote here. <laughs> <laughs> What's it going to be, the green peppers or the red tomatoes, ladies and gentlemen? Will you all please vote now? Well, up they go. Just look at this. Is it this a close one? And it's such a mixed bag, too. But would you believe there is one more? Red <laughs> tomatoes! Well done. Yes. Thank you. Congratulations to you. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Chef. Hundred pounds spending money there for you, Ken. Much, Thanks so much for coming along. It's been and, a real uh, joy being yeah, on here. You enjoyed it? Yeah, it's super. Yeah, good Thanks. luck with your retirement. You. Oh, Enjoy it, all your you. bird watching and stuff like Thank that. You. I hope it goes well for you. Super. Take care. Thanks very much. Bless no, well. Good. That was so close, <laughs> wasn't yes. it? Oh my darling. So so close. I said there was one in it, but have you enjoyed it? Thoroughly enjoyed yeah, it. It's Learned fun, a lot. It? As well. oh, no, you're picking up yes. tips all the time how to do things, make yes. things taste a little yes. bit different. Yeah. All right, and maybe create one or two dishes for him. 
Well, might, yeah. Yeah, you might do. Well, you've got a ready, steady cook hamper to take away with you, oh, so you might good. have to consider that. But, yeah. Lovely for having you. the company thank chef. You. Always a pleasure. Yeah, thank you very much thank indeed. You. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, it's been great fun. It's Hazel and Ken. <laughs> Quite a heavy bag today. Sometimes you think, oh, what's inside there? There we are, got a few bottles. Let's take that out. We've got some capers. Oh, a few grapes. Yeah, let's eat those boys. They're really okay. nice. All right, we've got a bunch of grapes. Rather delicious there. Let's feed the audience here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got a nice bit of our smoke trout. You see these in the supermarket all the time and down at your deli. I know they can be a little bit pricey, but they're packed full of lovely flavour. Our chefs are going to certainly show you what you can do with that. We've got some creamy mashed potato there, uh, along with some fresh raspberries and a uh, little bottle of red wine sort of confit with a Cabernet Sauvignon and some salted capers. Uh, someone's not happy at the moment. <laughs> and seeing as though he's going to be the first person to choose, this is going to be interesting. Over to you, Gino. OK. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess we can do a kind of fish cake with the uh, smoked trout, and then we can do a kind of... Uh, sort of with a kind of chutney with the grapes. Mm -hmm. Nice grapes. <laughs> um, trifle, maybe? Trifle. We got the jelly, we send a use sponge, we use a bit of bread, put everything into a bowl. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> put it in. Very nice indeed. OK, thank you very much. Yeah, for that, I think Gina. I'm going to stop there. OK, all right, fabs. What about you then? Uh... OK. Um, maybe a fish cake, but a different style, with uh, breaded or something. Uh, well, Fish cakes definitely is what I had in mind when as soon as you pulled out the potato. So we could do fish cakes, but maybe spice them up with uh, chili, Gino. Yeah. Okay, all okay. Right. And then we could do sour cream with capers mm -hmm. to go with it. That will work lovely with fish cakes. Um, also, we could do a full with the raspberries and some of the uh, this this uh, jelly. Uh, st stacking it up, but use uh, fresh cream going Some through it as scones well. Some or something like that with the raspberries. Well, I was thinking maybe to use the thyme up and you could see a James Tanner grape cake. We could do a steamed sponge quickly in the mic, but use grapes in it and incorporate some of the jelly. Mm -hmm. Finished off I with a nice bit of cream. <laughs> I really like that. Yeah, this. yeah, yeah, yeah. You might well <laughs> like it. Listen to him, he don't want to do it, does he? I yeah? like that. But I've got to ask the audience to do it. You've got to do it in the form of holding up a card. What's it going to be, a green pepper card or a red tomato one? Please, vote now. And up they go. And uh, <laughs> not only... I love these people. Not only did Gino like that, but the audience liked it too. It's a James Tanner bag. Grab hold of that man and let's get cooking! <laughs> OK, James, here we are, how are you doing? Cool. OK, your ten minutes cooking time starts now. Cool. Gino's Gino, here, what fish can we cakes. do? Fish, fish cakes. Okay. Fish cakes? Oh, all right then. Lovely, what can I do for you, Chef? Right, um, we need to get on a bit of custard. All right, I'll That'll do that. That'll be great. I'm going to get the uh, mix on for the sponge. A little bit of scrambled egg with that smoked fish too. That'll be lovely. All right then, so we've got a few choices. That's for you, Gino. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Now, Gino, can I have just a little bit of fish? I'll just take that little bit of fish there That's to go fine. with my eggs. Is that all right? Yeah. And I'll put that in there. And I've got a custard to make. Did you want a custard and scrambled egg, did you, Chef? Yes, please. That would okay, be beautiful. OK, lovely. Oh, uh, right. Chef, did you say you want some chilli in it? Yeah, I've, I said uh, dry chilli flake. I thought it would work quite well with it. OK. Mm -hmm. Right, tell us uh, what you're going to be doing when you're right, making so this sponge. Just... Very quick sponge. Yes, it is indeed. We need to get that in the oven quite quickly, don't we? I'm just trying to get the scales to work. Mm-hmm. Uh, the scales, yeah, have you put that back? Get on zero. Oh. Yeah, there you go. Right, so it's on this, zero now. This is an old one. This is an ounces, okay, this one. So we're going to go with four ounces mm -hmm. of butter. Okay, that's 100 grams of butter for those of you who are a little bit more modern than us. <laughs> then, I'm, then I'm using. <laughs> we are terrible, aren't we? Like that, chef. So. Soft brown sugar. Yeah. Okay, which is another four ounces. Mm hmm. Like so. And then we're going to cream these two together, add four eggs and four ounces of self raising flour, then fold in our grapes. OK, I'm going to get some more eggs if you're going to do some of that. They're here, they're here. OK, can I have a few of these, Chef? Yeah, yeah. that's fine. OK. OK. There we go. Right. Now, you could also you could throw other things into that sponge, couldn't you? Oh, couldn't you? you could mix it with all kinds of different fruits. This is just a basic recipe, yeah? Yeah. So you could mix it with what? orange, orange and vanilla's nice. Always like that. 
orange so, and vanilla. You like a little bit of that? That's lovely. OK. But obviously with grapes, so it's obviously something different. Have you got the eggs there? Lovely. OK, I've got a few more eggs here, Chef, too. Okay. So totally left up to you how many you want. So it's really simple. You whack in your four eggs, like so. Then just mix in your flour. We're going to fold in the grapes and get it straight into the microwave. All right, then. So in with the flour. And what other things would you add to it, then? If you, you said you were going to incorporate that, you're going to throw some raspberries in there, maybe? Um, yep, raspberries could... Raspberries would work with it, strawberries would work with it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a really universal mix, really. Yeah, I know. So, Once you've got the bases, you can incorporate exactly, all sorts of things. But one of the important there, things I've got to do, Ains, Yeah. we've got to grease that, our bowl up really, really well. OK. So we put some butter in there, first of all, then some flour. This enables it to all stop sticking up. The worst thing you want is to turn out your sponge and it doesn't turn out because it can stick to the bowl. Okay. So plenty of butter. Why? That will be so funny. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, are, Gino. <laughs> Can you imagine that, Gino? Oh, that will be funny. I'll, I'll get you to do the sponge next time. No. <laughs> <laughs> Bit of oh, flour. Right, then. And then you just tap off the excess. Oop. Right, so. OK. Right, now we've got our grapes. What I think Lovely. I might I've got do my is... milk boiling. I've infused that with a little bit of vanilla extract. You can use a vanilla pod if you want, guys, but I put the vanilla extract in there because a lot of us do have that at home. Avoid the essence. All those vanilla essence things, they're rubbish, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's really just not worth having. It tastes artificial too, so get the extract. It is a little bit more money, but how often do you use it? When you put it in, you get that real vanilla flavour. Of course, you can use the uh, vanilla pods too. Six minutes to go now, gentlemen. How are you getting on there, do you know? What I'm going to do, I've got some capers, and this one, they... Um... They in salt. The best thing to do is, as I done, is put them in a bowl of water. Just take the salt away. Yeah. And um, then I'm going to just chop them up and put them in a little bit of yogurt with some uh, chive, just to give a nice sauce for the fish cake. Mhm. Mm okay. So. Okay. And bowl. tell us, how have you made the fish cake? You've incorporated that all in there, have you? Well, I put everything into the mashed potato with a little bit of coriander. And then one thing that I always do, I like to put one egg. Yeah. Uh, inside because what's happening with the egg? It keeps the inside nice and moisture. Yeah. That, 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 that's the reason why I like to do that. Okay, you like it a little bit softer. Yeah, I like it a little bit softer and crunchy in the, uh, on the, you know, around and nice soft in the middle. Okay then. All, All right, I'm just melting down a little bit of butter here. I've got the, um, my egg. This is kind of almost like this has been taken to, they call this the ribbon stage here, guys. It's the eggs uh, yolks and a little bit of the sugar, and that's the basis of our creme anglaise. And I'm going to knock the hot milk in there, then pop that back in there until it thickens up a bit. We've got our butter melting there for a quick scrambled egg, and we're going to incorporate our flake, our little bit of fish going in there. What are you going to make now, Chef? Right, next up, I'm whipping the cream for the full, which okay. I'm going to take... Do you want, you want electric beaters? I've got, or you... I've got it all ready to go, mate. OK, you ready so to go So I'm going to put hand? a bit of icing sugar in there as well. All right, Some then I've got a quick up question. A Perhaps uh, we could hit Gino, we could ask anybody for this before you start going... Uh, Tommy O'Donnell from Dublin in Ireland. Good afternoon to you, Tommy. I was wondering if any of the chefs could tell me how to make gravy similar to the type sold in English fish and chip shops. My children love it, but we can't get it here. Thick gravy. Gino, Gino? any idea of that thick gravy? Or do you, you want to take that What do you mean to serve it in the fish and chip shop? You, like, don't, uh, <laughs> you don't. I mean, you don't should go up it, north, mate. In Italian. You can get, you can get, you can get a bit of old curry sauce up there and all to go with your chips. Well, why? What do they do in the fish and chip shop? Uh, they, they, they just serve it with that. They serve gravy or curry sauce, so you can dip your chips in there. So you're basically what he's talking. About. <laughs> well, why would he want to do that? <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with mayonnaise? What's wrong with other things? Oh, I don't know. What are you asking me for? What about you then, James? Right, okay. I'll keep that down here, okay, so you can hear me. All right, mate. I don't right. mind. I'll answer to you. You carry right, on. Okay, right. So talking about gravy at fish and chip shops, it's completely different to what we call as you or a sauce at a restaurant. Okay? Yeah. At the restaurant, for example, we'd make a natural reduction from a massive stock. And Ju juices too. Yeah, and juices and juices and reduce it as well. And that's how you end up with the kind of sauce that we serve at a restaurant. Mm -hmm. At most fish and chip shops, they use a powder product, OK, which they add to water. Now, um, they use a very, very strong um, beef extract in that. Uh -huh. And that's what gives it its very rich flavour. Intense, intense okay? flavour. So when people eat it, they automatically think, wow, this is working brilliantly in my chips. Well, don't get me wrong, it does. 
um, but it's exceptionally easy to make, but that's how it's done. OK, so we're talking about a powdered gravy. And uh, perhaps, Tommy, best thing to do is you, you can get powdered gravy on the market now. And when they tell you to add a certain amount of liquid, what we suggest you do is add less. Reduce it by half and then you're going to get a much thicker gravy. Yeah, stronger. And yeah. stronger tasting gravy too to go with your chips, all right? That's probably the best thing. It's not the best uh, way of having a gravy, you know. That's, it's more of like a... I don't know quite know. It's like a bit, bit, bit like a, a, a blobby blancmange or something, isn't no, it? No, really? definitely. But it, but it is. It's thick because it sticks to the chips. Yeah. Two, got, two minutes yeah, to I'm go. Now. I've got yeah. Hold on, mate. I've got. Oh, there we are. There you go. Quick, take that. Okay. Cause me, 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 me things boiling here. Custard. Okay. What about, what about that little uh, that little jelly that you've got there? Do you like the idea of something? Well, like that? this has got. Um, yeah, it's a comfy jelly. So it's got an exceptionally strong, intense flavour, which is. Really nice, actually. It's coming. Do you like that? Yeah. Yeah, it's quite nice. Yeah. Is it like the, the like the custard then? Like the custard? Yeah. Not like the custard, like the gravy you were talking well, I was about. Say, what's, he, what's he on about? <laughs> um, yes, <laughs> in somewhat because it's very thick. Cream. Have you got any cream left? Uh, yes, there's some cream left at the back. Thank then. you very much indeed, my man. Right. All so right, then, there's our very thick. Yeah, but this is custard. the same kind of thing. This is done by. This is thick like this because it's uh, natural reduction. Yeah. That's why it's comfy, it's cooked down slowly. So what they've done is, a lot of people think comfy is like onion comfy where you have bits in it, but this has been reduced down and passed off. OK, lovely. There you go. And our scrambled egg. No, so I'm not beating it all the time, just kind of mixing that around. That will all come together. Did you get that toast for me, Gino? No. No, OK, don't worry. Scrambled egg on the plate, well, mate. Don't worry. Toast? No worry. Honestly, it's no problem. There we are. Bit of, bit of uh, black pepper, pepper. <laughs> Why I got a fake piece of bread here? <laughs> <laughs> so cantante. Don't worry about it, Gino. 40 seconds to go. Less than that, 30 seconds. My apologies. Right, here we go. Here we are. Bit of chopped chives in there. Let's do it. You've got your, you've got your pudding ready. Yeah, it's coming. 20 seconds to go. Right. Come on, guys. Let's get this out. Here. Have you got a dish for this? Well, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Let's find out about what our chef uh, wants to call his right. well, cookie I think bag of the day. This is grape, and it's um, definitely something to trout about. <laughs> oh, no, I know. Uh, That's all right. Tell us what you did here, chef. Right, OK, first of all, we've got the sponge in. I went mm. for all the amounts earlier. Yeah. Um, we've got honey at the top of it mm. and um, grapes, and then we put the mix on. Yeah, so but blast the it custard into the actually split, and the, one of the reasons that custard split, it came to a boil, we were really going for it. Don't let that boil up too much. You've got egg yolks in there, we've got the milk and the cream. You, just kind of keep that nice you've and You've just got to stand with it, Absolutely, you know? stand yeah. with it and just stir it very, very gently, not even with a whisk, just with a wooden spoon. That will really make all the difference, OK? Right, then we've got the, uh, the full which is uh, some of the comfy jelly, mm -hmm. and we've mixed that well, put a few grapes in there, held a few back with the raspberries, then we went for comfy jelly again, mm -hmm. cream, and just stacked it up alternately, so it's a right one on the hips. Absolutely, and definitely. the fish, Kate, you combine the fish and just Yeah, you combine the fish, pan fried the one egg, a little bit of uh, uh, chilli, because yeah. Jimmy said he likes with the chilli, and I did this one with the uh, capers, yoghurt, lime juice and chive. Simple. Lovely. And, of course, we've got that lovely little simple scrambled yes. egg with a bit of smoked trout on top. They're all available on CFAX. Indeed, you can get them on our website, mm. bbc.co.uk forward slash food. From Gino, James and myself, till next time on Ready, Steady, Cook. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>